sitting there with a ton of negates and we're, whoever can resolve the first spell wins the game. It's not like that. Um, so I think the deck's obviously very powerful and elements of it can be frustrating, like any best deck. Uh, but it's actually pretty robust and diverse for what it is. Well, it looks like Hobbs is going back to his flash roots, everybody. Could have been a Bant Ramp strategy, but we already see that he's going to Bant Flash, and a main deck copy of Chemister's Insight does display that. And now there, as he takes a mulligan, a copy of Night Pack Ambusher. So not the ideal openers, but probably a good enough one to keep here for Hobbs. For his opponent, Mark Welsenbach. Thrakto Sacrifice, both players 3 and 1. Welsenbach looking at a hand with two Midnight Reapers, a Mayhem Devil, a Claim the Firstborn, and a couple of lands. Don't forget about that Priest of Forgotten Gods as well, so... He will keep. We'll send a Midnight Reaper to the bottom, and we are underway. Round number five of seven of our Season 1 Championship here on the SCG Tour Online. Shout out again to our sponsors, Ultimate Guard, Carnox, Coalesce Apparel and Design, and don't forget about MTG Melee as well, making all of this stuff possible. Are they behind the scenes? Temple of Enlightenment's going to scry the top card on top, so Mystical Dispute will be staying on top. That'll be the draw there for Hobbs. We'll see what land he wants to play. It looks like he'll go with a basic force to be able to Cast Nether Gust. Like, can't gust this black creature. It is Priest of Forgotten God, so that is in there. We'll head back over to Hobstrom. Another copy of Night Pack Ambusher. Obviously, a very good card in this flash style strategy. Breeding Pool, one of the battlefield on tap. Hobbs will fall down to 18, and we'll head back over Wells and Boxway. Interesting that decision there on the scry on the first turn. The Mystical Dispute, not exceptional here, but Hobbs' hand very land heavy. It seemed like he would be willing to accept any spell. That spell's probably the floor but it's going to line up just fine here. It does look good there, taking care of the Midnight Reapers. So this is a Temple Garden untapped, and the Ambushers will be on the way here momentarily. We'll see if Welsenbach wants to wade into the red zone. This is a Mayhem Devil. That one, will it resolve, is the question. Hobbs does have the answer, or at least a temporary one, there in Ether Gust. Uh, this is going so to clarify the game state here. If you see a response to this, then the coast is clear to attack. If not, you're probably going to want to hold tight. Yep. And Wellsenbach, unsurprisingly, is going to hold tight because when your opponent plays a Temple Garden untapped and we are in an open deckless tournament, you know that Hobbs has access to a lot of copies of Nightback Ambusher. And here comes the first one. It resolves and it's into the red zone in there for four. So Wellsenbach is going to fall down to 14. Hobbs does have... An interesting decision to make here this turn. He could play that Hollow Fountain tapped and leave up the mana for another Night Pack Ambusher, or he could play Teferi, bounce something, leave his options available um, with a Hollow Fountain untapped for Ether Gust. So, you know, there's there's some appeal to both lines, but, you know, there's also the appeal if I do nothing, I get myself a little wolf as well. Go ahead, partner. Right. Well, I think Teferi plus Gust versus Ambusher is pretty close on the table, but the fact that you get a wolf if you do nothing, I think is the tiebreaker here. Okay. Well, Hobbs is going to go with the wolf line. This looks like it's going to be a claim of the firstborn. Now, what do you do about that? If you're Hobbs, you could gust, you could do some sort of gusting here. You can gust the mayhem devil instead of the claim or that's an interesting spot, actually. If you are gusting, what are you actually gusting? Because if you gust the Mayhem Devil, okay, that's one less threat. Are you actually going to let this happen? Okay. <laughs> interesting, interesting stuff. Here come the beatdowns. Is this where you slide in with the Ambusher? Uh, I mean, you may as well, right? Like, whatever's going to happen here, it's going to happen regardless. So you might as well not allow uh, Mark to get back to his main phase and make another play. All right, well, there's Nightback Ambusher. So, rar, going to come in here. My assumption is E to Mayhem Devil, but maybe not. Okay, so this is E to Mayhem Devil. This turn actually ends up being very, very good for Mark, all things considered. There will be three damage on the Nightback Ambusher. Two damage is going to come through. Then you can play... Well, actually, interesting. So we're going to do this now. I'm a little surprised by that. You were expect well, well. You can't let combat resolve, right? You just lose your creature. Well, so don't you let damage resolve? There's three damage on your. Am there's three damage on the ambusher. You play the other mayhem devil in your hand. You sacrifice. Um, you sacrifice the priest and the token to the devil. Two damage goes to the. The two sacrifice triggers go to the wolf that has 
three damage on it, so that's point four and point five, and then the pre-trigger resolves, and you make him sacrifice the other wolf. Am I wrong about hmm. that? I'm thinking. I think that's how it would all unfold um, if you let that stuff occur. Now, now naturally, you're down two mayhem devils then. Yeah, it's but you're possible. taking care of both ambushers. It's possible that the logic here is I don't get another. There's another copy of Claim the Firstborn in hand. That's a really hard card to cash in profitably. And so if it's close, Ty might go to let the wolf stay in play for one turn so I can set something up with Claim. Okay. I don't know. There's appeal to your line, too. I, I, it's just what you're trying to play around, but I do think yeah, there's an know, argument for it. My line is definitely not 100% correct, I, I, and I think it may have been the line that I would have taken, but only because I can see Hobbs's hand, right? Yeah, I think that, I, I, yeah, I think, I think the position could just be, if it's close, you would prefer to leave the ambusher in play for one turn so you can do something with claim. Yeah, I mean, I'm, otherwise I'm just, you might not be able to cast that card in. Yeah, I'm just working with so much information that both Mark and John aren't working with because I have full information, which is lucky for both you and me. And I suppose all you fantastic viewers at home is here comes Mayhem Devil number three. And that's going to go away. I said that's, a, that's, the second, that's the second Mayhem Devil that was already in hand. Pardon me. But it's going to get gusted nonetheless. Here is... Uh, that's and see, this is, this is the setup here. But yep. Now Mark gets to just blow his doors off here where... If you get rid of both the ambushers straight up, then it's harder to set up anything with the claim. Yeah, and this is exactly what you're talking about. Now the priest resolves. Calder is going to come in, drew a copy of the Mayhem Devil. Priest is really getting to work this game. There's a Temple of Mystery. That ain't really going to do it here for Hobbs. And it looks like, for what was, truth be told, I think a pretty good start for Hobbs. Uh, what with the Mystical Dispute lining up against the Midnight Reaper, Night Pack Ambushers, plural, Drew to Gust, Anna to Fairy, and ultimately has to concede the game. So Mark Welsenbach is going to win game number one here over Jonathan Hobbs. Rakdos sacrifice up a game over Bant Flash. These players are sideboarding, and while they're working on that, I want to let you know that Star City Games, hopefully you find, folks know this, but for the duration of this entire year, we've got ourselves a little bit of a news department where we are doing daily news, top stories, SCG Tour updates like you may have seen earlier this week when we updated everything that's going on for Season 2 of the SCG Tour Online. Of course, talking about our events just like this one, our championship here for Season 1, doing previews of Magic cards as well as they come down and down the pipeline. Starting on Monday, Doubles Masters previews all week long. We'll be updating you there and so much more. StarCityGames.com. Go to the homepage right on the top left-hand corner of the website. Not hard to find. Myself, Nick Miller, and John Hall bringing you as much news as we can so you can keep up in the Magic community. Patrick, who do you think is favored in these sideboarded games? And what I think was a little bit of a surprise there for Hobbs, I think he was probably thinking he was in the driver's seat that game, and it didn't work out. Claiming the first point actually ended up being really good in a matchup that it's generally not that great against. So I think from Hobbs' perspective, a lot of the game is going to be uh, can I get on top of the action here and then leverage my flash spells to make combat prohibitive, protect my good threats, whatever. Uh, in terms of actual power on the battlefield, there wasn't a whole lot going on from the sacrifice side, but uh, Priest there is so problematic for trying to stabilize with creatures. Post-board, Hobbs picks up more sweepers and more creatures uh, that can engage meaningfully with Priest. Um, and I think that helps the matchup here quite a bit. Well, both these players have submitted their decks, and we're ready to rock and roll. I'm getting ready here for game number two. Hobbs will have the option. Unsurprisingly, he's going to play first. Take a look at this opening hand. Well, it's got Growth Spiral, so that'll be a snap -rooski. Easy does it. But uh, the creatures that are fragile with really good text boxes in terms of managing the battlefield are a vulnerability for decks that play creatures and not that much removal. That's just always been the case. Yeah. And Priest is like the top of the list in terms of, de of defining that sort of thing. This will be a Dreadhorde Butcher to kick this game off. Girl Spiral in response. Temple of Plenty. There will be a trigger. How about a Scry? A scry shows a Shark Typhoon. Well, do you want that one in this matchup and in this situation? And it's obviously got a very, very high ceiling and truthfully could trade with that Dreadhorde Butcher, all things being honest, um, if so it does come down to that. This start is so much better for Hobbs, even though Butcher on turn two is kind of like a signature play of this deck, because it's just stats on the battlefield, and he can manage mm -hmm. that pretty easily with Ambusher or with Teferi over several turns. His ability to deploy creatures on the battlefield that are going to stick around is not encumbered by a Butcher nearly the same way that a Priest represents. So even though the Butcher ostensibly is the more powerful turn to play, it's proactive, it doesn't require other stuff, I think Hobbs is much happier seeing this card 
than seeing uh, something like Priest. For you uh, more seasoned Magic players like Patrick and myself, I'm sure, Patrick, you remember Slith Firewalker. I um, played with that thing at Nationals. Almost ran, the sure. ta- almost ran the table in the constructed portion with it. Um, and I'm just thinking about that card uh, from the way back when, 2000, uh, 2004, 2005. Um, I, be- I believe a card from uh, the second set in Mirrodin block. Um, actually, no, I think it's just flat, oh. it's flat from Mirrodin. No, because it's Original alongside Mirrodin. Chrome Mox. Yeah, it's alongside yeah. Chrome Mox. Um, but just thinking about, um, you know, Slith Firewalker and how it was a really good card uh, back in the day. And Dreadhorde Butcher is a souped up version of that. Doesn't see a ton of play. It shows how much this game has definitely changed. Well, some of the surrounding cards were different. For example, in that Nationals, I went turn one on the play, Crow Mox Mountain Slith Firewalker. Turn two, Mountain Seething Song, Sword of Fire, Nice and Equip. So it's a little <laughs> bit different. When you're just kind of attacking <laughs> with a creature, then dark ritualing equipment onto it or whatever. <laughs> I do remember that deck. I tested against that deck a lot because my friend was going to nationals and I was playing, uh, surprisingly, I know, the white weenie strategy at that time um, that had like Hikori and a bunch of other stuff. And yeah, that red deck, that was, a, that was a pain in the butt to play against. Did you have Tim Aiton's Jinx Chokers? Uh, I don't think so. I don't Real think, heads. but I can't remember. Real heads, no. I know. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. I know. Anyways, back to 2020. <laughs> yeah, where the cards are a little bit more powerful. Jinx Choker in in 2020. That would be a hoot. Teferi's gonna bite the dust. Dreadhorde Butcher gets bounced by Petty Theft. So we got a Brazen Borrower over there on an adventure. A Glass Casket, not a bad follow up here. That'll take care of the other Dreadhorde Butcher. So that's gonna go away. And this turn. Here for Hobbs. Actually, it looks like a pretty good one. Got Night Pack Ambusher at the ready, along with Brazen Borrower. So it's going to keep Mike, or excuse me, Mark Welsenbach guessing just a little bit here as here comes the Butcher once again. Two spells in one turn, keeping the battlefield clean. This is uh, exactly the type of game that Hobbs wants to play. Also, are you sure the cards are better now? Do you think the cards in these decks are better than Chromox? I know it's apples and oranges, but like. Ah, I mean, I mean it, it is tough because obviously their design philosophies were much different. It's tough to say. I mean, Chromox is, of course, an obscenely powerful magic card. So it's really hard to say that, you know, these cards are better than that card. But I, I think it's an interesting discussion. For sure. Chromox mm-hmm. would be really good with cards like Uro and Teferi Time Round. <laughs> how- oh, you think so? I think you'd build a deck around those. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get this guy a job at Watsi. Uro's going to come in, a little bit of life. <laughs> Shark Tokens going to hang back on defense sacrificing a fable passes now as well as in buck we'll see what land he does want to dig up out of his rakdos sacrifice deck got a lot of different things he can do on this particular turn swamp is the land dreadhorde butcher looks like where the fun will begin so there's the one one been casting that a lot this game what's the follow-up gonna be though well coming in okay trigger Trade ski. All right, just going to take care of Teferi. Doesn't care about that shark token enough. Liliana Standard Bear is going to come in. There will be a trigger. Get yourself a card. Mountains the draw. Pass that turn back. Glass Casket once again, perhaps. That's in there. That'll take care of the Standard Bear. Shark is actually going to attack. Nothing to protect. And as you can see, Hobbs has multiple copies of Night Pack Ambusher at the ready. Doesn't look like he's got enough cards in the graveyard just yet to bring back her. Oh, I take that back. Why would why would he have enough cards? They always do. So here comes the Titan of Nature's Wrath. And looks like a pretty clean time to be getting this thing back. So three life, draw a card. No land to put on the battlefield. Drew a glass casket instead as we're going to head back over to Welsenbach, who, uh, well, this time it does feel like he's pretty far behind, partner. Being able, a post board, being able to fend off things on the cheap and uh, particularly with cards like Glass Casting, actually exile some of these cards, which can be problematic if they're uh, simply in the graveyard because of recursion, either self or with other cards. Um, really giving Hobbs the breathing space to leverage his more powerful cards. And objectively, his cards are much better. It's not close. It's just sometimes the machinery around a, surrounding some of the Rakdos cards are too hard to work around. But with Glass Casket, Hobbs has had no problem this game. Dreadhorde Butcher. I feel like I've been saying that a lot. Look, I feels like it's been cast every turn since turn two. Maybe it actually has been alongside a Mayhem Devil. Those won't be attacking into that gigantic Simic 6-6. Here's a Temple of Mystery. Shatter of Shatter of the Sky. Looks like it's going to the bottom. Hobbs feels like he can do better than that. I, mean, I would say that he does have a pretty commanding advantage on the battlefield too. So, goodbye Dreadhorde Butcher. Hello, Uro and Shark Token picks up a copy of Breeding Pool. Going to place another battlefield, and it'll ETB tapped. 
And it looks like there will be a chump block. And if Mayhem Devil is chump blocking, I think we know who's winning. Shadow of the Sky on the bottom also. We're in a spot where Hobbs would rather draw a land than a sweeper. Pretty Though I, I may have to stop myself here briefly because Call of the Death Weather is going to resolve. And that means Mayhem Devil is going to come back with Menace, yes, but also Death Touch. So Trigger, Sacrifice the Fabled Passage, Target, Uro. Death Touch from the Trigger means that Uro is now in the graveyard, a place that it's obviously very familiar with. But this combination could be a strong one here. Here's a Witch's Oven. Don't think there's a Cauldron Familiar anywhere around this game just yet, as it would be showing up on the top of the screen for you. And then, ah, oh, Gigantha, come and play, has been added to the hand. There is Nightpack Ambusher, Lofty Denial, a new one there from Corset 2021. A very nice card alongside flying creatures. And there's your attacks. Is it because it references creatures with flying? That is correct, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, I'm awake now. I know I was off to you a tough start earlier, up. but... You made fun of me someone get this guy a job of design. That's right. I, uh, I, you know, I, I got my breakfast in during my break. Mm -hmm. doing a little uh doing a little prep cooking for the next two weeks i'm feeling it i'm feeling it right now look at the big fella well maybe mm. not maybe maybe look at it go to the graveyard yeah poor Gigantha. mayhem devil numero dos Somebody needs a culture familiar pretty darn bad, but somebody's only at five life, so that's not going to be uh, not going to be much of a thing here. You might be seeing another nightpack ambusher on the end step. We will this four mana four for becoming a real pain in the neck for a lot of people in standard. Now, well, sure, okay. Oh, some five of Tiffany. Yeah, modes. <laughs> we, got modes. <laughs> we got modes for days. It's yeah. what we unnecessary. Got. Don't even need to show it. Yeah. Here come the beatdowns. I, I you know, I'm just gonna. You get to stop a trigger? Oh, you yeah, pick a thing, man. Family? You just dunk on that, draw a card, clone a wolf, whatever. It's a lot of modes. Here come the blocks, and there you do see them. We're going to see some modes here in a second. So Bob Epiphany, of course, is counter target spell, counter target activated or triggered ability, return target non-land permit to its owner's hand, create a token as a copy of target creature you control, and of course target player draws a card. Things are about to get rather sublime, and Hobbs yeah. is loving it. I would say, for all the people on the SD Tour, especially over the last year or so, that like to play Flash Strategies, I think most of, of either Hobbs or Rossum that like to play this kind of deck, but more so Hobbs than Rossum, truth be told. Uh, and so, with that in mind, I'm deeming this card his Invitational card. Alright. So we're going to stifle your uh, deal one damage of Death Touch, draw a yes. card, oh, yeah. bounce whatever. Oh yeah. What a what a what a what a ham and lamb a ding dong beating this is. This is nice. This is uh, a nice card to have in this spot. <laughs> That'll take care of game number two. We're all tied up here between Hobbs and Wells and Box. Sublime Epiphany, just putting a check mark on that game. So game number three about to be underway here between Hobbs and Wells and Box. They'll go to the drawing board a little bit here, and we will take a look at your beautiful face. A lot of people do react to this photograph as though you did not approve it i know sometimes we don't approve everything by you but we did approve this picture of patrick sullivan sullivan satchel where you can send your questions to mailbag at starcitygames.com and patrick if they're so lucky you might answer it well i i do answer questions that come in that is this the that's the whole column but if you're exceptionally lucky and by that i mean wise it's a skill game uh, if you're selected as the question of the week, not only does it get answered, but you receive $25 in SUG credit. So make sure to send your questions over to mailbag at starcitygames.com. Alternatively, my DMs are open on Twitter at Basic Mountain. Hop over there. No, people think that like I wouldn't approve this image. They have no idea what I don't approve, what I wouldn't <laughs> This that got sent to me, I was like, yeah, that's great. Use that photo. You only sent me the one. It wasn't like you gave me like 20 to pick from. But oh, I know. I knew, I knew you'd love it. Remember when SCG tried to put my face on a play mat and not pay me for it? Uh, you know, that's a different conversation. Not approved. Not, not approved. approved. <laughs> not approved. But this this photo, yeah, that's great for the promo. <laughs> good with it. You know, if it's good by SCG, it's good by me. Nah, we'll keep you here, bud. 
Not long, approved. Long term, long term <laughs> relationship. <laughs> Not approved has been announced. <laughs> Hobbs gonna keep a hand with multiple cops to shatter the sky on the draw along with a law of the denial. And it looks like four cards. It's marks. Marks on oh my goodness. Now it's a tough road to hoe. Here from Mighty Mark. Four cards and needs to draw land really, really, really bad. <laughs> It's what I would say. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Mm, geez. Mm. There's a priest. So it did draw the land. There's the ooze. I mean, Hobbs' hand is pretty modest if he doesn't find a fourth land for a little while. Something. The deck is all cantrips and mana, so hard to miss. I would agree that it is difficult. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like we might be trying to ambush here. And I think the sequencing here is better. Your hand's so bottlenecked with creatures that play your sweepers first and then try to win with your leftover creatures. Who's the boss? And there's Noxious Grass to take care of that. Lofty Denial, I like cashing in there just because your hand's so clogged up. Leaving up two is going to be tricky. As long as Hops can kind of just like play his stuff efficiently here, I think he should be in really good shape. I think I agree with you on that front. Just the ability to play, just play your spells. Your card quality is higher. All that jazz just needs to actually have it come to fruition. That's all. Especially, especially with another Shatter in hand, Hops can kind of just. Okay, you know, Mark's starting to do some stuff here. None of it's very threatening. Just hang back. If it ever gets out of control, you have Shatter ready. And uh, there's a very good chance you can just win on the battlefield with the stuff that you have in your hand. There's Ember's Shield Breaker. Looks like some Brazen Borrower slash Petty Theft action is going to work itself into the equation here. Yeah, I think you're, in response, you want to get rid of the priest. You'd rather not have the third creature into the battlefield here. It's also not a bad spot to gust here if you really want to play the gross spiral this turn to try to cantrip into some more help. And if you miss, you still have your petty theft left over to break up a priest exchange on the next turn. So the ceiling on this play is really high for Hobbs. If he finds a land, especially good mana, he's just good to go. And if he doesn't, he still has Shire of the Sky plus uh, Petty Theft to protect himself through the next turn and beyond. Well, there's your Petty Theft. Goodbye, Priest. Remember, this is a game in which Welsenbach is on a mulligan to four. There's a Glass Casket. I mean, it's, it's interesting insofar as, you know, I, I want to say... It mostly just, you know, Hobbs is struggling a little bit here, but, you know, we're looking at a hand that's incredibly powerful. Um, his card quality is, of course, higher than his opponent's and all that jazz, and the opponent I'm only going to four. So Hobbs is doing totally fine. It's just, you know, he'd like to be able to get an IPAC ambush on the battlefield and or a tall Samir and just, you know, make make this as easy as it, I don't, I don't want to say should be, but definitely could be. Well, Hobbs's hand is, it's a little bit on the awkward side, but the thing is, there really aren't any bad draws. Mana improves his hand considerably, and almost every spell does. So it's yeah. just about being careful here. Um, you know, if you find another green mana in a fifth land, your hand becomes really good. Ambusher is one of the misses in the deck, though, at this point. So there are a couple misses, but still a very commanding position overall. Yep, I would agree with you.
Pop's taking a look at his options. Shatter among among them. Yeah, I think I, I'm curious to see what what Hobbs wants to do here. My instinct is to shatter. You you could talk yourself into maybe waiting another turn, but the problem is that Mark has good spots to commit his mana to between uh, the Jingatha he has as a companion and the Castle Lockwave. So it's very likely that that Wolzenberg's Walsen, next turn just in, next turn just involves using the mana but not advancing the board. And once you're there, you might as well shatter. Big find there for Hobbs there. Not only is it land number five, but a second green source that pretty much unlocks the rest of the hand. And shout out this guy here again. This makes a lot of sense because your your mana is going to be committed to doing really good things for the next three turns at least. Yep. And so even though it's a modest return on the shatter, it's only one creature. Uh, that that's probably as good as it's going to get. Yeah, I think I would agree with you on that one. So. The battlefield gets reloaded up a little bit, but now this is where Talsamir maybe comes on in and blows some stuff up and so on and so forth. So again, it's all about a uh, it's all it's all about the um the power level of Hops' deck. This was what this is really is right now, you know? You're, yeah, you're no, just seeing an action. I mean he's he's playing with four and five mana cards that are plausible and constructed and his opponent's not. So the burden is on Mark to get the game over with. Like I said before. Hobbs, a lot of those plays look kind of awkward, but he was in a spot where most of his draw steps were going to be really good, and all he needed to do was keep his head above water to find enough power, or even just another green mana to unlock his whole hand. Now he's here, life totals fairly high, no real action on Walsenbach's side of the battlefield, and now Hobbs can really start to go to work with his better cards. We are going to head back over now to Welsenbach with this Liliana Standard Bearer. Unfortunately for this for the LSB, I've been a I've been a little bit unimpressed, I think I would say. Here's Nightpack Ambusher. Remember the ambusher does a does with a wolf. Yeah. So battle that. Yeah, tribal synergy. You're talking yeah. about being unimpressed with uh Liliana. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my experience has been, it's not like it's bad or anything, but just when the card is going off, in quotes, the game has become unmanageable for you. Like these decks accrue so much card advantage and dominate on the battlefield by such a margin that like drawing two cards after you get swept is just, it's good sometimes against Shatter specifically, but when you're getting blown out by fight triggers and behind on the battlefield, it's just not worth a whole lot. Wolf. Wolf. Ever heard of it? It's called a wolf. Looks like uh looks like Hobbs on his way to victory here, my friends, and that means he'll be moving on shortly to four and one with his wow. Can we change the name to Wolf Tribal? Well that's wolf not tribal. a wolf. That's that's the farthest thing from a wolf. That is Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath. Don't need that one to win the game, but it certainly doesn't hurt. So here come the beatdowns. Going to knock the opponent down to three. Welsenbach is going to be sliding down to three and two, while Hobbs is going to be moving up to four and one. That is Mayhem Devil, folks. That can be powerful at times. Uh, it would help if Hobbs were at one. Uh, however, he is not. So we'll see a fabled passage be sacrificed here. You think he's going to phone a friend? <laughs> Not quite. Concede, sure. concede, or draw the companion. Oh, I oh I phoned the friend. <laughs> Come on, are you kidding me? Let's see what's going on over there, huh? Hey, hey you got the we're in a tight spot. Could you use your <laughs> <over here? laughs> I need a little help, please. As soon as you get a chance, like, yeah. you know, no rush, but yeah. like if it comes sooner rather than later, you know. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Good game has been emoted. We'll emote them back and forth and. Here we go. So, Dump and Hop, four and one.